I think the worst experience that I had, we were taken out of our houses with guns to our backs. And I would never want anyone to go through that experience because we had no idea what was going to happen. They, they took us out of our houses and, and locked us all in one house. The men folk were allowed out to go and you know, feed animals um, and kill meat for, for consumption for, for the humans and whatever. But it was all done with a gun in your back. What, what I always remember is the fact that when us men folk were allowed to go out during those 30 days we were locked up, you would go and sit in the, in the dairy in the cow shed and we'd be milking cows and this little conscript from over the hill would come in begging for a glass of milk because they were starving. They were worse off than us in some ways. Some of them were 17, 18 year old kids and yeah, we had a bit of sympathy for them. They didn't want to be there any more than we wanted them to be there. A lot of the young uh, conscripts that came to Pebble Island thought they were coming to liberate us. They thought that they would, we would welcome them with open arms because we were a part of a British colony. We would say, yeah, wonderful, how wonderful you're here. And they were quite shocked. And the biggest danger at most times, well, 75% of the time we were in, is that the conscripts didn't know how to use their guns. They could have easily, you know, started firing at anything and shot one of us. So that was our, probably our biggest worry at some point. The whole thing was a little bit surreal, to be, on, to be honest with you. Ha having not been in the fight in Four Goose Green, it was a strange thing to walk into it with the euphoria, really, of the paratroopers that had done the fighting. Um, but, you know, the sadness of the people that they'd lost as well. I was at Ajax Bay for most of my time during the war. I was there um, when we were bombed and five men died in a simple bomb in there that was so fast. And I understand 40 years on that people give their lives. But uh, I, I also know that I joined the Royal Marines and you don't join the Royal Marines to have lunch with people. Uh, at the time of the war, I think this was the biggest shearing shed in the world, which proved to be a great asset for um, keeping prisoners. As you can see, all these sort of pens um, were, was a great way of keeping prisoners uh, under guard because there's walkway all the way through. So, you know, paras, um, Gurkhas even that, that arrived, they, they would have been um, keeping these people secure in here. As I understand it, the, the Argentinian officers uh, had moved into the houses of the local people. So they brought all the local people into this hall. Uh, over a hundred people was kept in this hall. So, uh, you know, this was, it was pretty grim, I think. This, this wouldn't have been very nice. But it's amazing, some of our leaders in Stanley now were kids in this hall. I was stood just outside when the people from the hall were, were released. At the time, I don't think I understood what I was seeing, but over the years, I've realised that you've suddenly got your freedom back. To be in this situation, to all of a sudden somebody comes and opens the door, that's it. You know, it, was a, it must have been an amazing feeling to be released. was a watershed moment for the Falklands without a doubt and everything I think that we think of even now is before and after 1982. It, it literally changed everything. We have worked really incredibly hard since 1982 to build the Falklands socially, politically, economically. We've come a very, very long way in that time. Our history is, is critical and, and, and it's so important to who we are and as how we understand ourselves as Falkland Islanders. We're a very young country, obviously, and with no indigenous population, uh, you know, our history really only spans back a couple of hundred years. But my family, the Biggses, you know, have been 
very integral part of that. My family arrived with uh, Governor Moody uh, back in 1842. And uh, so we're, we're now nine generations of, of the Biggs family in the Falklands, of which I'm a, a sixth. Um, and on my father's side, um, I was born in Chile. He came here to work as a labourer in the 1960s and met my mum, married, uh, went back to Chile, and we came back here when I was three years old. So uh, a mixed sort of history, I guess you could say. We are still forming, you know, our, the, the shape of our community is still growing and changing and I think that's a really positive thing for the Falklands. Um, you know, we have more than 60 nationalities represented here amongst our tiny community. And, and that's, you know, we, we have the, I guess, the older traditional side of Falklands identity, but that still is an a evolutionary process for us. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing. Susie Clark. I grew up on um, Pebble Island. My dad was a carpenter there, so we, we grew up free-range children on the farm, um, following the, the shepherd about, which is where my love of farming comes from. Uh, my name is Gilberto Castro. Um, I'm the manager of Firroy Farm. I'm originally coming from, from Chile. Um, uh, I come across like uh, 1998. I was supposed to be coming here just for a two-year contract, and after 22 years or 24 years now, and I'm still here, you know? We've been doing holistic management for six years. We'll be into our seventh year, um, and I think this year is probably the first year that is starting to show. We're starting to be more confident because the results are, are starting to shine better. So it's not a short-term thing. You can't do it one year and expect the results straight away. If you have a good grass in the farm, you have a healthy sheep. If you have a healthy sheep, it's more income for the farm. Seven years ago, we started with about 14, 15,000 sheep, and now we come with 20,000 sheep. We're weaning our lambs um, from, from the ewes. The lambs will go into a separate camp um, and, and learn to be independent on their own and the ewes will slowly make their way to the settlement for shearing. Normally when we do the job, probably we'll be back home about 6 or 7 o'clock. Um, we start here at 6 o'clock in the morning in the pen, and obviously we get up uh, about up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So it's going it to be a long day. Yeah, and I hope we're still all happy in, by the end, end of the day, you know. Sheep are important, and they're important for the world because wool is sustainable. Um, it's, it's got a, a lot of wonderful properties. It's renewable, it's biodegradable. I think the world needs to look at wool more, importantly, and, and pay a little bit more for a wool product. I, I don't think the Falklands would be the Falklands without sheep farming. I think it's, it's very, very important. I'm Petra Gilding. I live in the Falkland Islands on Port Louis Farm and I'm a residential care worker in Stanley, firefighter and tour guide. We're on Port Louis Farm. Um, this is our north coast. We've been through the Gentoo colonies and now we're at the Rockhopper colonies where there's also king cormorants nesting in amongst them. My parents bought the farm 25 years ago. Um, we started doing tours for the last, this is our fourth season now we've been doing tours, bringing people out to see, see our wildlife and our beautiful coastline. Most people are like, wow, it's amazing how, like, how lucky we are to live here. When you come across a beautiful view like we have today, people are just, yeah, mind blown. The one thing I really love about the Falklands and our farm is our coastline. It's quite funny, recently I had a dream that we had to sell Port Louis and in my dream, I just kept thinking, well, I'm never going to see the coast again. Because <laughs> that is definitely my favourite place to be. On any given day, I would choose to be here on the coast. Even though I do love travelling, I will always live here. So went to school in Chile for four years, lived there most of the year, and the homesickness was very real. Um, really, really missed the Falklands, but I think because we had Port Louis, we had so much to miss. We used to like imagine uh, the farm and the different tracks that we used to take down the coast and, and just think about all the things that 
yeah, we, we were missing. We used to go onto Google Earth as well and have a look at the tracks that we used to drive down and um, yeah, yeah, really, really missed it. I will carry on the tourism business. Um, my sisters and I will carry on on the farm. Um, certainly Port Louis will never be sold. It will always be ours. I think the Falklands is is getting a bit, you know, we are modernizing in certain areas, but I also like the fact that we are quite old fashioned in, in other areas. And it's um, it's it's nice to, to see children growing up here in such a safe environment. And I hope that that continues to be. At the moment, I am managing Port Louis. This is my fourth season. It's a huge responsibility. <laughs> it's stressful at times, um, being manager of a, what is a huge farm, you know, 43,500 acres, um, 7,000 sheep. We did have about 80 cattle. I've brought that down to 40. Um, we have horses, of course. I love it, but it is tough. It's hard and it's, um, it's very time consuming. I'm very tied to the farm quite a lot of the time, which, you know, is just what comes with the job. But um, sometimes I go three, four weeks without being able to spend time with family and friends. To be a woman in farming, it's people. Some people look at you and they think, how can you do it? I think it's all about the mindset. You know, if you believe you can do it, you can do it. It's definitely got easier. On my first season, one other farmer said to me, it will get easier, they said to me. <laughs> Don't give up, it will get easier. And it, it definitely has. I often think of him saying that to me, and, and it definitely has. I don't plan to manage Port Louis forever. My younger sister is interested in taking it on with her boyfriend. So um, I am planning to start getting more involved in my dad's fishing business. So taking a step back from the management of Port Louis, um, letting my sister take that on, and getting more involved in, in the fishing business, which I'm excited about. It will be very different. It's a huge industry that brings a lot of money into the islands. Um, it's something that we have to be aware of environmentally as well. Like we have to conserve the marine environment um, and look after our seas. And, and that is all something that we're working towards as well, the, fish, the Falklands and fishing industry as a whole. But our business are uh, making sure that we are going to be working as green as possible, you know, um, conserving the environment in that way with better ships, um, cleaner you know, ways of, of fishing. So it's something that I'm looking forward to getting more involved in and, and taking into the future. I'm Alice Clark, a jeweller based in the Falkland Islands. So uh, I found myself in the Falkland Islands because of my fiancé. Um, he's a seventh generation Falkland Islander and we met in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales in Pateley Bridge. I, I was fascinated um, with him and his story and his family's history as well. Um, completely just yeah, blown away by it all and I, it wasn't even a question. I, kinda, I wanted to come down here. Um, he said, you know, we could split our life in two and cause he wanted to spend more time down here. So yeah, we sort of said, I was, yeah, of course, I'd, I'd love to come to the Falklands and we could try it out, you know, half, half the year in Yorkshire, half the year in the Falklands, uh, but I love it down here. At the moment, it's more like eight months down here than four months back home. Living and working here, um, it's like my work has developed so much. My skills have improved because I'm working with certain stones that I wouldn't have worked with if I stayed in Yorkshire. Um, my inspiration has completely it's opened up a whole new like world of inspiration for me. All like the ocean is just so vast, and I've got and there's so many things here. Not just the ocean. You've got the hills and all the flora and fauna, and yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Hi, I'm Rianne Alazia, and I'm a shearer working for Paul Phillips at Fitzroy. I guess like grew up watching everybody else do it. My dad shears um, and it, they always look so cool, you know. Uh, I thought it would be a, a good job to, to get into but also like with the family farm it's a good uh, oh, hobby to have I guess but I prefer working with sheep all the time. 
and shearing. So I started in 2018 full-time shearing and I was only 18 as well. So um, it was really hard, really hard work. I nearly quit quite a few times, I must say. Um, but stubbornness got me through. You know, you get so tired, like not even from partying or anything, like just so tired from the hard work that you fall asleep like anywhere, just like that. Um, that's really normal for, for me anyway. Uh, but it is nice, there is a lot more younger locals coming into it, which is good. Nice community feel, like we're all in it together. You know, all the early starts and the long days. And if you kind of keep going together, you kind of get through it easier. It is a good job. It's a good community, good family. My dad was born here. When he finished school, he moved to the UK and joined the RAF. And then after the war, he came back to the Falklands and started working at Port Stephens, which was a big farm, which included all of this farm. And when that split up, he got this, this part of what was originally Port Stephens land. So I decided to come home and help on the farm. Uh, well, most of it's working by yourself, being your own boss. You have to decide what jobs you need to do that day. Mostly sheep work. There's different breeds of sheep. So we've got more of a Corridale, which is slightly coarser, um, but they tend to hold, their f hold meat on their bodies more because they're putting less into their wool. Um, and then you have the Merinos, which are a lot finer, but their bodies are a lot slimmer, like leaner, and they wouldn't survive as well down here in the south of the Falklands. So we've got a cottage that we rent out to tourists. Um, currently it's only got two bedrooms, but I am building an extension to add another bedroom and extend the living space, and which I've got a grant from the tourist board to help me do that, which is 75% grant, which is really good. Me and my sister try and do the jobs that we don't really think my dad should be doing anymore, like gathering the rough camps, doing the rough beat on the camps, because it's quite hard on your body um, to cover that ground on a motorbike, and try and take over the shearing a bit as well, although he's a bit reluctant to give that up. Farming in Falklands has challenges all, all over the place. We're miles from any market, either to get a product in or a product out. Uh, climate is uh, currently the most critical thing we're facing. Lack of water is a real issue. The r rainfall has, yearly it has dropped, but not significantly. The pattern of the rainfall has changed. You don't get steady rain once a week or two weeks or something like that. You tend to get 20 to 30 days of nothing and then a bit of a downpour and it all runs off into the beach. The last two years we've worked at ways to dam and try and hold water up. But we're going to be struggling to be farming stock on the open country in 20 to 30 years unless we do something about water retention and how to access water. Climate change, of course, is a global problem and the uh, Falklands are, uh, are united in wanting to do their bit. The Falklands, it does have a, a near pristine environment and uh, the reason for that is partly luck that we have a small population so we haven't fouled the place up too much and the people that live here have always been proud of their uh, environment and enjoy showing people around it and uh, we have a unique combination of wildlife and wild unspoiled places and uh, you know you've just got to look around you and see the clear sea but that is our greatest asset without any shadow of doubt is our environment and we're, we're going to do everything we can to try and preserve that.
because we're in the 40th anniversary year this year and uh, you know we're remembering the the huge commitment of the UK and the uh, the armed forces in recovering the Falklands we've got to look 40 years on because we're better off now than we were then by far I want to people to say in 40 years time that we got it right today um, in doing what we can for the environment and meeting the, the challenges we're facing today. It's not just about 40 years. I think most of us have involved in the war every year from sort of the 2nd of April until the end of June or whatever, we, there is something, we feel something in here that is different to anybody who wasn't there. And that's no disrespect to anybody who wasn't there, but you still feel it. But when you get an anniversary like the 25th, the 30th, or the 40th, it just brings it back a lot more. I mean, as, as long as I live, I will always remember those people, and always remember those days. That's with me, it's with me now. Oh 